The growth in NFE deployments and the evolution towards cloud native methodologies is helping to create new opportunities for communication service providers. Joining me now to explain how Red Hat is helping guide its telco customers in the APAC region is Ben Panic, Senior Director, Telco Sales Vertical for APAC at Red Hat. Ben, thanks for joining us in the program. Very good to meet you. Good to be with you here today. Thanks for having me. Ben, as the number of NFE deployments increases, how do you see your telco customers building 5G networks and leveraging this technology in telco clouds? Well, customers have been deploying NFE for a number of years now in different flavors, looking at NFE all the way from the core and through the networks. We've seen deployments in EPC technologies, IMS and others. And over the past few years, we've now seen customers start to debate and think about open horizontal telco clouds. We've seen customers like Rakuten in Japan deploy this model from the initialization of their network. And in India, we've just seen with Vodafone Idea, the adoption of a strategy towards that open horizontal telco cloud. And I think it really lends itself to the next step in deploying 5G and the use cases associated with it. Previously, we saw customers deploy NFE stacks in vertical environments. And the recognition now is that's probably not sustainable as we move towards 5G. They need to go open and they need to build those horizontal clouds. And that's what Red Hat's helping them do. Well, let's follow up on that. Um, where are you seeing some of the biggest benefits in the APAC region with respect to horizontal telco clouds? Well, look, I'll go back to India, first of all. You know, if you listen to Vishar talk about some of the savings that Vodafone Idea has had, they're looking at 50% OPEX savings in the core. You know, you hear similar numbers from Tarek at Rakuten. You know, they're looking at 30% savings in OPEX in their network. And on the CapEx side, if you go back to India and Vodafone, they're saving 85% of their CapEx by deploying virtualization in the core. So Red Hat's working really closely with partners like Cisco, Ericsson and Nokia in that network to ensure that we can deliver and meet the customer's timeframes. It's really, really exciting. I think it allows the customer to drive benefits in their networks that they haven't previously been able to. They're able to deploy services in days now, not months. And that's through the use of automation as well. Those are very impressive numbers, and you've just talked about automation there. Um, how is automation and containerization changing the way companies operate? And are you beginning to see an acceleration of this process? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, given where we are today. You know, with the onset of COVID and the pandemic globally, we see customers from you know India in the West all the way over to New Zealand in the southeast and up to including China deploying more and more automation. You know, the, the resources that customers have in terms of human resources is scarce. And those resources need to be deployed, building applications and working out how to deploy new services rather than semi-manual processes, which can be automated. So whether it's customers here in Singapore or throughout Southeast Asia or the rest of the region, we see automation, one of the top priorities. And to your point around containerization, I think that also lends itself to a more agile environment. Customers are needing to work with ecosystem partners to design and develop new industry-based solutions that they're going to be able to take to market and leverage the 5G networks that they begin to roll out and build through the coming year. Do you foresee reskilling challenges ahead, especially amongst Asian telcos? I think we're always learning. We're always trying to reskill and our customers are doing the same thing. Um, the, the operations side, I think, is probably one of the areas where customers are going to focus in on. The operationalization of cloud-based networks, a fully cloudified network, is definitely different to what we've run for the last 25 plus years. And granted, they have skills on the IT side of their organization that they're transferring onto the network side. But that reskilling is something that's right at the front of their mind. And many customers are working with Red Hat, leveraging our new telco cloud certification that we launched at Mobile World Congress last year. And that was born from discussions with customers like Rakuten about 
how do we reskill our employees? How do we put them through training programs? And how do we get them ready to serve these new technologies for our customers? It all comes down to services and solutions. Now, how will 5G enable new opportunities, not only for the early adopter telcos, but the mainstream and, dare we say, the technology laggards? Well, it's a million dollar question that everyone asks, right? What's the business case for 5G? Um, I think the critical part to answering this question is ensuring that you have an ability to tap into the innovation and drive that the ecosystem offers. And that's really where the horizontal telco cloud comes into play. You want to be able to tap into different industries, whether it's mining, agriculture, health or automotive, tap into application partners there that are going to develop solutions that we know about today, like telemedicine, or maybe ones that are just being developed. You know, with one thing that we do know as humans is we're constantly developing and we're coming up with new ideas. So as operators look to develop those 5G networks and build on those new use cases, I think that's one of the most important things, having the ability for their product management teams to be able to draw down on the ecosystem and build specific industry-based applications. If you look at mining as an example, huge safety component when you're out in the mines, having the ability to run auto autonomous cars and trucks out in the mines you know, at night is going to be hugely beneficial as they look to increase their safety profiles in the mines. When you look at other things like sports stadiums, that's a really hot topic with many customers that I talk about. As users, as consumers, we're all posting and consuming so much more video content. And when we get together in sports stadiums, it is a real challenge to provide those services. So leveraging things like 5G and leveraging the ability to deploy the technology with VRAN and spin up more services in sports stadiums to deal with sports events is something that operators are going to be able to monetize. I think then on the consumer side, it's, you know, what's next? There's AR, there's VR, there's many different technologies that we're going to be able to develop and drive all the way out to the edge for things like gaming. And I think that's an untapped market where we'll be developing new applications that are going to be really exciting for us all moving forward. Tying all of that together with Edge is obviously the ability to automate that from an end-to-end -end perspective and be agile enough in your workplace to develop and deploy on the fly. And that's where those containerization services are gonna be critically important. And then if you think back to tying all of that together, you have to have the backhaul network in place. And there's lots of work going on in the industry to push the speeds. You know, we saw last week Infineera and Windstream announce 800 gig throughput on their fiber networks. So, you know, we're all gonna consume much more video. We're going to demand much more of the network and the technology is going forward. So it's a really, really exciting time to innovate and be part of that with our customers. Well, Ben, thank you very much indeed for joining us today and sharing your insights. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for having me.